All right, folks, I did more research, had some help from friends figuring out where to find the right information, and I finally got the information I needed to make sure everything worked properly. The big thing was gene weighting, um, meaning the genes are assigned a value which makes it easy to just do a little bit of math and you can figure out where things are. All right, so let's go to the worksheet first. All right, here's our worksheet. After uh, looking through Tamara 77's Ultimate Crossbreeding Guide, and his new updates that he's done. Um, I highly suggest watching it. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the description. Um, w is uh, the weight of 1. X is the weight of 1. All green genes are 0. 0.6. That's, that's the weighting that you use when you're calculating. Um, hardiness is cold resistance which means it'll, it'll uh, do better in colder environments. Um, target plant genes do not count towards calculations. So you can throw anything in as your target gene, or as your target plant, and it'll work. All right, this is the gene pool that I'm working with here. This is all, all of the genes that I have to work with. Um, and I found my, my perfect set to get what I need here. So, okay, let's go back to the, uh, to the game here. All right, it's sapling 30%. I'm going to wait until the last two or three minutes before it goes uh, to uh, crossbreed stage to set these plants in. And I'll just set them in the four corners. It'll draw all the genes from them. And we will get what I just showed is the calculation. Right there. It's going to be a little bit, so... Alright, let's go to web view. Okay, this is the, uh, the ult ultimate crossbreeding guide for Rust. Um, and he also has an updated pinned, update pinned here um, that goes into more detail of what works best for what condition, what what kind of gameplay you're looking for. Um, for genes for uh, mostly hemp is what he's working with for scrap farming and uh, what have you. But he also talks about yield values for... Uh, you know, if you're making food for a clan or whatever. Um, I, I, I want four Ys, two Gs, just because of the cloning. Uh, I get an extra clone, so I spend less time cloning to grow crops. I just have to throw them in, propagate them, maybe twice, and I got enough to do crops on my crop line. Okay. So this is, we're using a 4G target plant here. And, uh, wow, it's 59% sapling already. Um, so it'll grow really quick. Let's see. Okay, let's, let's go into a little bit about the calculations. He, he goes into a pretty good detail about the calculations. So here, let's uh, watch this part of the video. To add basic numbers. So imagine you have a six digit number because after all, plants have six genes. The setup would look something like this. When you're working with genes, it's important to note that each gene acts individually. 
So therefore, genes 1 will not interact with genes 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So therefore, you could draw imaginary lines in between each one of these six digits and then do the addition on their own. Hence why I've used numbers that add up to less than 10. You can use a similar setup to count genes. So every plant has six genes, so the setup would be very similar. Once you've drawn out all your plants, you do the addition. In the example, I'm using three, but you can use as many as you'd like, up to eight. Time to count the genes. When you're counting, you're looking for doubles. So let's try and figure out the gene for column one. As you can see here, I've got two Ys in the first column. Therefore, there's a double Y and the Y will take priority. As we move on to the second column, well, you can see that again, we have a double Y. Therefore, the Y will take priority. Moving on to column three, you can see that there's two H's. Therefore, H will take priority. Now, moving on to gene four. Well, there's no doubles, so what's gonna take priority? The reds will always take priority over the greens, if they are single. But if we move on to column five, we can see that there's a double Y. And remember, the doubles will always take priority. Hence, the double Y will take priority over the X. And then finally, in the sixth column, it's quite easy. You can see that there's another double H. Therefore, H will take priority. All right, I don't, I don't want to watch too much of his video on my video, um, but you get the idea. Um, he goes into great detail on it, and it's something you definitely should watch on your own. Um, I'll put the link down below. Okay, uh, we're about to go out of sapling stage. Oh god, I gotta hurry up. God, I hope I did it quick enough. I got into watching the video and forgot what I was doing. I think I might have missed it. God, I'm going to feel like an idiot if I did. Okay. After that big mistake. Yeah, see, I ruined all of those. This was the only one I salvaged, which I have a bunch of already propagated, but these, not so much. So, I had to propagate another one of this breed, and I've already got my cutting from that. It only propagates two, so. All right. Let's do a quick check. We're going to use this block of the farm block since it's far enough away from everything. And redo this whole thing again. Alright. It all looks good. Alright, I'm going to do this as a quick sequence. I'll plant everything and then fast forward it and we'll talk again when I get the uh, other four plants without the oops this time <laughs> all right there's my fast grower so now we're gonna go into fast forward mode All right, I'm going to just make sure that I don't mess up this time. Doesn't matter which plant you put where. They just have to go in around it. 
so that he can draw the genes from them. So two of those are going to grow pretty fast. Not nearly as fast as 4G, but... Yeah. I feel bad about ruining these, but... The way it looks, it looks like those are going to be sacrificed anyways. I don't understand why the corn did the way it did, but... I only have to do corn crops every once in a while, so it's just good to be able to propagate them real quick. And If the soil conditions are perfect, I'll get 10 years out of each one, so in a 10 bed line here with 8 per, that's 800, 800 ears of corn out of. 80, 80 uh, clones, so I only have to do it once or twice a week. This one's moving along pretty fast. Yeah, I did a uh, rework of the electrical in here. I just wanted to be able to shut down lines I'm not using so that I'm just, I don't see a reason to have the lights on. But now I can turn off and turn on the lights at each station fifty nine percent getting close alright we'll time lapse this again I'll be back when we're real close to crossbreed There you have it. That is perfect. That is exactly what I wanted to see happen. Y Y G G Y Y. And <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm I'm not even using pumpkins. This was just something that I wanted to learn with. Okay, so now we wait for that to ripen. Let's, uh, I need to clear my mistakes here. <sighs> so sad that I ruined those. Oh well. The outcome was worth it. Okay. Let's go over what we've learned. Um, going to web view. No, going to worksheet. Worksheet. Okay. So, like we said, you, here's your gene weights. And this is covered in the Ultimate Crossbreeding Guide by Tamura77. Um, all, all green genes are a weight of 0.6, so if you have two Gs, that's 1.2. That'll outweigh a single W or a single X. But if you have two Ws or two X in a column, that's that would be 2.0. Uh, but if you had a W and an X in a column, that would still only be one. Um, so you'd have to, if there were two, you would have to be doing more than just four, 
four uh, plants at a crossbreed because um, three Ys would only be 1.8. 0.6 times three is 1.8. So you'd have to have four Ys to overpower two Xs or two Ws or four Gs in a column. So, yeah. Um, this is, you know, the simplest, you know, it's only four, four plants, one at each corner. If everything works out right, you might be able to save the plants and use them again. But it's looking like most likely not. That was, that corn was just an anomaly, I guess. But, uh, yeah, you could do up to eight surrounding one plant. So you could calculate eight separate gene set uh, sets and come out with a value at the bottom and know what you're going to get. Um, my buddy Ryan also showed me a calculator for doing all that. But I don't know where the website is. Let me look here. And see if I can find it. Um, okay, there it is. Genetics calculator. Let's bring it up on web view. Okay, there it is. So this is the genetics calculator. And it's got some other nice stuff. I'll put a link to this in the description also. But you can take and put in several crops In, and it'll calculate what what will come out if you put in several different crops that you're you're going to have around your target. Okay. So yeah, that's that's the uh, genetics calculator. That's a nice another nice tool. All right. So back in game. <laughs> That's just no, so neat that you can you can actually do do the work on paper first and know what you need to do to be able to get what you want. It took me a long time to get all of the uh, gene samples to get what I wanted. And in fact, I got one I'm propagating right now. That I don't have any other uh, replacements for so yeah those are two samples that need to go back in the fridge but yeah I collected all these different samples trying to mix in and get the proper set to get 4y2g All right, back to the worksheet. I'll just go down a column real quick so that you can just kind of get an idea in your head how it works, okay? So an H is worth 0.6, a Y is worth 0.6, a W is worth one, a Y is 0.6. Got two Ys here, and that's gonna outnumber because that's a pair. This would still be 0.6 in the tally. This would be 1. This would be 1.6 for Y. So Y wins there. Um, three Ys here. That's 1.8. That's going to outweigh an H. Easy. Uh, two Gs. So that's uh, 1.2. 0.6. 0.6. 1.8. One point two wins. G. Uh, 
two G's, 1.2 again. One, one. 1.2 wins. Uh, obvious right there. Three, three Y's is going to win. Two Y's outweighed the one and the point six. So that's that's the obvious outcome. And yeah, having having the gene gene weights just makes a huge difference in being able to tell what you're gonna what your outcome is. Knowing <laughs> knowing the key to the puzzle. Sort of. Okay. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's that's how you do uh, targeted crossbreeding and get exactly what you want with the resources that you have. Y'all have a good one.